It was called the Atomic Age and the Fabulous Fifties. Swept away was the gray mood of the war years. This was an era when Americans had fun. This joyful mood came in part from the robust post-war economy. Factories were churning out products to satisfy the growing consumer appetite in America and to meet the needs of a post-war Europe. The defense industry kept military supplies flowing in reaction to the Cold War. And the nation was building straight up in the cities and far out into the country. America's economy was the biggest in the world. With job security, a good paycheck, and no military responsibilities, for many, the time was right to settle down and get married. Millions rushed to the altar, sending marriage rates to an all-time high. Home builders anticipated the needs of newlyweds and young families. They built new suburbs that appealed to countless first-time home buyers. Eager families left urban areas in droves to enjoy modern homes with the latest time-saving conveniences. Among the most famous housing developments were the Levittown communities. Navy builder William Levitt took what he had learned about efficient military construction and applied it to the mass production of homes. To keep down costs and maintain uniformity, Levitt bought his own forest, sawmill, and railroad line, then standardized production and built thousands of factory-style homes. It was exactly what many young families wanted, a neat, affordable place to live. $90 down and $58 a month could buy a two-bedroom, one-bath house with modern amenities, well within the reach of the new middle class. The 1950s home was the focal point of family life. There, women devoted their time to being good wives and mothers. The role of cheerful homemaker was strongly encouraged, even idealized in media images. More than any other decade, motherhood was embraced. Between 1945 and 1964, roughly 76 million babies were born in the United States. Collectively known as baby boomers, it is the largest generation in the nation's history. Unlike earlier generations, this one came with a guidebook. Dr. Benjamin Spock's Common Sense Book of Baby and Child Care. In it, Dr. Spock suggested parents relax and have fun with their kids. His influence made children the center of the 1950s household. In the suburbs, families could live a seemingly idyllic life. Well manicured lawns, safety for children, fun leisure activities, and good neighbors that all fit right in. With their own post office, schools, shopping centers, and places of worship, there was no need or desire to return to the crowds and complexities of cities. Not everyone was pleased with the growth. Urban planners warned against unchecked sprawl and wasting natural resources. And in the cities, as whites took their economic clout out of urban areas, funding for civic improvements left too. Many inner cities became blighted. Those outside of the financial boom of the 1950s remained in declining urban areas with growing poverty and crime.